just three weeks before the bike ride started, we got a lucky break. My wife Julie managed to get a teaching position in Cybergia, 40 kilometers outside of Kuala Lumpur. As soon as we arrived, I took the bike straight down to the local bike shop. Go Cybergia. So as you can see, here we are at the bike shop, getting the bike ready to go for the big ride, in a good old fashioned service. So it's primed, ready to go in 10 days time. After inspection, they basically said that the green bike was just a useless piece of crap that did random stuff all the time. And I kind of knew that. But it's what they said about the grey bike that really caught me by surprise. The super suspension, which makes it so good for off-road riding, makes it a nightmare for long distance riding, particularly the bags that would bounce it around endlessly. Fine, I said, I'll just turn the suspension off. All you need to do is flick a little switch and it's done. But they were not convinced. But at this stage, I'd run out of time and I certainly didn't have money for new bikes. We just simply had to go with what we had. The day that we're about to ride out to KL, we were heading over to Leisure Farms, doing a little bit more of the fundraiser stuff. We ended up not leaving Leisure Farms until about about three o'clock. This is uh, the first leg of the real trip. Out to the great beyond we go. Right. Tokyo, here we come. Yeah, buddy. All right. Be easy. The first leg was 125 kilometers. We would start by riding north before we hit the coast. Then we would turn left and keep going until we got to our destination, Batu Patu. This was a pretty good meal out here. Like, I enjoyed it, nice Chinese food. So yeah, dinner was good, but poor old Gift, the millennial, he was struggling with some real first world problems. Okay, I brought two phones, two phones specifically, to have one that unlocked and one that didn't. But what ended up happening was when I got to Malaysia, the backup phone, I couldn't unlock it. I, Jason was the only one that had data. So suddenly I get this Facebook friend request from Caroline Egbilu, which is Gif's mother. Mom is a very uh, uh, intentional person. She got worried because I hadn't been on social media and she ended up calling Jason directly. Mums are always scary. I would put it like this. Don't try to sneak off on the Nigerian mum. After dinner, we hit the road again, and we were enjoying a really nice evening cruise. Until at one point, I turned around to talk to Gift. I felt like we were making good timing on this last one. We were. And I've kind of been fighting through the cramps, so stopping is not a good thing. Uh. But seems like there's something raking up against that, that bike, uh, against the wheel. It sounds like the, the spokes are getting touched. That, that becomes a little bit more problem, problematic. Can I get you a yellow zip ties? Here we are, they're right there. Aren't those the yellow zip ties right there? Yeah. So we MacGyvered the bikes the best we could and continued. But as the night went on, we got slower and slower until we were only going around I think 12 kilometers an hour? I, I think we got maybe about 35, 40, 45 kilometers and my body was starting to go enter into the cramp mode. We stopped at this um, closed uh, store and we just ended up sleeping on the porch. It is now two o'clock in the morning. Gif's over there, he's asleep at the moment. He's catching up on his E's and he's feeling good. Unfortunately, I got bitten by all these kind of bugs and I couldn't get any sleep at all the first day of our trip and we, and we haven't even got really halfway to where we were supposed to get to. Now somehow we've got to make up an extra 40 or 50, 60 kilometers on top of the 100 that we've got due this morning. So I'm not sure how we're going to do that. So uh, for the next day, Jason had looked up uh, a bus station nearby. Being up, being up. 
you go back the way we came, and then you go there, and then you go there, through that town. Oh. You know, it's not ideal, but we do what we got to do to make things happen out here. Um, you know, uh, shit happens in, during the trip, and uh, uh, this is part of that. So we went off our separate ways, and uh, I started biking out to the bus station. Then he was going to ride and, and go upon his way. Going back to b -Nut to catch a bus, and I'm going forwards. Hopefully to meet him at our accommodation in about 12 hours. I was gobsmacked. After everything I've poured into the preparation of this ride, how could everything go so wrong so bloody quickly? I was really tired and really disillusioned, with 160 kilometers still in front of me. I had to stop somewhere and freshen up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a squat toilet shower. It's probably just best if you don't ask, really. I don't think you want to know. When I got to the bus station, it was empty. We're in the middle of Malaysia, it was really rural, and mind you, I also have no idea what the language is. Found a random bus guy, helped me get my bike on. Started talking to the bus driver and people, started talking to a couple of the passengers. You know, of course a lot of people were hitting me up because of my hair. And then it was also where I kind of realized how safe this area was. People weren't trying to rob you, nobody was trying to really cheat me out of anything. It was just good conversation. Like I legitimately enjoyed it because I was like, this is what I wanted, like I wanted these tidbits. Now we were both heading in the same direction, to a hotel room in Malacca. So I came to this restaurant, had a chicken curry, did this video diary thanking our supporters from Singapore and Leisure Farm. We are day two of the actual ride itself. Uh, yours truly has been riding for a long time. It's so I sat down, leaned slightly forward and... <sighs> So I remember waking up being really shocked that actually I'd just fallen asleep right there in a public restaurant. I don't usually do that kind of thing. I then got up, jumped on my bike, and I looked down at Google Earth and was quite disheartened. I'd been up riding since 5.30 a.m. that morning. And according to Google Earth, I wasn't even halfway there yet. Ahead of me was the hot afternoon blazing sun ready to beat down on me. Not only was the heat beating me down, but the equipment was too. This little pocket here was supposed to hold my phone so I could look down and see Google Earth for directions. The afternoon sun created a glare on the plastic so I couldn't see Google Earth, which means when I had to clarify directions, I had to stop the bike, pull the mobile phone out and have a good hard look. And I had to do this sometimes once every five minutes. Then there was the bike itself, the useless piece of crap. I came to a small but steep hill and I was doing the hard yards when I decided to reach for that extra low gear just for a bit of relief. I clicked it, down went my feet. The pedals had given way underneath. And to think I hadn't even gone two full days yet. I had five and a half weeks yet to go. Still been a bit of a journey just trying to get to Malacca. Um, but more for what it's worth, at least it's by the sea and it looks good, right? I got to the hotel around 6.30ish. I forgot exactly what I did that night. All I remember is collapsing on my bed. Huge one yesterday, we did a big one today, 125 kilometers. At the end of the 125 kilometers is my wife. It's her birthday today, we're going to have a birthday dinner. She's let me go six weeks away for this ride. The least I can do for her is stop by, have a birthday party with her and the kids. So that's extremely important. Okay, 
Well, today's ride is brought to you by the feeling of guilt. My family had to make some real concessions for me to go on this bike ride. The first one was time. I was gone for six weeks in which Julie and the kids had to move into a new house and start at a new school. The second was the financial burden. Now, you heard me talk about the financial failings in the last episode. Well, my family took the brunt of those failings. So when I realized that our cycling route was going through Cyberjaya around the time of Julie's birthday, I realized that this was a chance I could show Julie my appreciation. Just about to head out of here. Uh, this place has been nice. Uh, we gotta get to Cyberjaya. I left actually super late. I ended up calling up a taxi and the guy that I called up to taxi, that guy, man, I had the best conversation with him for like two hours. So he was like a light Indo-Malay and his wife was Chinese Malay and he was talking about his mother, uh, had kids, we were talking about hip hop and music. I was in heaven, I, I enjoyed it. Just what I don't need. I'm cruising along, making good time to get to Julie's party. Now we got what we call in the cycling world, a flat tire. Now this should have been an easy fix, even for a mechanical moron like me. But when I pulled out the tube, it was a 26 inch tube for gifts bike. I needed a 29 inch tube. And now I had to walk through this town to find one. So now I'm walking five kilometers across the other side of town to find a tire. Because I kept asking these people, where can I get a tire tube? Where? And they just kept going like that, just pointing. I say, well, it's in the sky, am I gonna fly up there? Social scientists say that 15% of the population have an IQ under 85. I think I found where they all live, in this stupid town here. So I found the shop and I found the guy who runs it and he's been great. And um, he, had the, he had the right size tube but the wrong valve. The valve was, was too thick to fit through my rim. So what did he do? He made my rim bigger. You know, we finally got to Cyber Jaya and it was just an, it was an easy trip. They always seem nice though. I've never had a problem with a taxi driver. It started raining along the way, so I kind of was worried about Jason, but man, I don't have a phone that has a SIM card. So I was like, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. ladies and gentlemen is a proper Kuala Lumpur thunderstorm. Of course the question is how am I going to get to Julie's birthday party dinner and I'm still 60 kilometers out of town. Uh, so I get inside the hotel. I think I got in at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, it was five o'clock waited, six waited. So I rang Julie and said hey look it's raining, I will be later than I first thought. She was okay with this, but I was on a time limit because it was a school night. I just had to wait for the rain to ease up just a little bit, just a little bit, and then I just had to go for it. As per usual, the useless piece of crap bike had its own ideas. The second leak in the tube in one day. me this bike is done as far as I'm concerned. This has given me nothing but grief since I bought it about eight months ago, nine months ago. It's had countless flat tires, it's had countless problems with the gears, like too many for me to remember. It never gets better. It hasn't even gone 500 kilometers and there's another 3,300 to go. I cannot trust this stupid piece of rubbish. Cannot. I'm done with it. Jason gives me a call and he's like, my piece of shit bike uh, I just left it behind. And I'm like, wait, what? They threw it off to the side, kicked it, and just left it for the villagers and got in a grab taxi. As far as I know, the bike is probably still there to this day. I don't care. That bike can burn in hell. And then I was like, yo, are we still doing your wife's birthday? And he was still on his way. So it was gonna be impossible. I walked in that apartment between 9, 9.30 covered in sweat, rain, mud. The kids were well and truly in bed by now and there was no party. Or 
So the next day, Jason hits me up. He's coming out because he needs to take my bike into the bike shop. Those guys were amazing too. How crazy could you get? Like I had a great conversation with Yousef and and um and added them on on Instagram and you know we were just going back and forth. So Gift gets all excited by <laughs> hearing a ringtone. I think why is Gift so excited about a bloody ringtone? Why are you so excited about the ringtone, Gift? Who can't be excited about Power Rangers ringtones? <laughs> How embarrassing! I'm so embarrassed right now. <laughs> Guys at Go Cyber Jaya had made a trade with Jason. He, they took our mountain bike, the one that I'd been riding that had the springs and the, the bike rack and everything issue problematic, and gave us a proper road bike that was just solid. The calamity on the first night between Gift and that grey bike was confirmation for the guys that this bike was not going to do the job. And so I, I didn't really feel I had a choice. I reluctantly made the trade. Having said that, they gave me a really good cradle, which I could put my mobile phone in so I could read Google Maps. They gave me the most comfortable seat you could ever imagine. And they even moved the tyres across from the old bike to the new bike. I think we have a winner! Alright. You know, so now we have the touring bike, it's going to make things a lot easier. Really more so in terms of Jason being able to ride as we are only down to one bike now as a result. So at least in this situation, it'll be the best bike for touring, though I will not be the participant on it this time. It was also a rest day for us. So the guys from Go Cyber Jaya drove us into Kuala Lumpur. And so we got into our hotel. You know, that first day, first night was just kind of like, look around. Now after a quick look around town, we retreated back to one of the local rugby pubs where we were planning to meet some of the local rugby players to find out more about Malaysian rugby. Because it is actually quite dynamic there. The sport is really growing. But unfortunately, because of the squeeze of time and everything that happened in the last couple of days, this fell through. So instead, Gift and I just hung out. After all the dramas, it was great just to sit back and hear Gift's fresh take on his Malaysia Kuala Lumpur experience. Kuala Lumpur was like what I wanted from a big metropolitan city that happened to be in Southeast Asia. Like it had the right grittiness. It was super diverse. It was a lot of people. It felt busy. The people were so nice. They were so nice and everybody was so cool. You like I could live in Kuala Lumpur. So after three very short days, two bikes turned into one completely different bike and two riders turned into one rider. But at least we had each other. And that was important for moments like this. And in the days ahead, there are gonna be many more moments like this. Here it is people, new bike, new start, Let's go to Thailand, eh? Alright, so it's about 6.30 in the morning. Uh, we're about to heading over to the bus terminal to meet up with Jason as we head out of KL to get up to Phuket. So, gonna meet him up there and uh, hopefully things are in a positive direction. It happened. I got Thailanded by a motorbike. We get to start our adventure from the bottom of Thailand. They proper name the Asia Center Foundation. So stoked about being on this trip. 